You are listening to Goof On Radio with Rich Jordan. My personal belief is that uh, there is very compelling evidence that we, uh, we may not be alone. There has been and is an existing presence, uh, an ET presence. It's not going to make a difference. It's not going to change reality. I believe, as do the other folks that were on the flight, that we, when we visually saw it, that it was something not from this world. Goof on Radio. Occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. Goof on radio. Remain seated, please. Permanecer sentados, por favor. You're listening to Goof on Radio with Rich Jordan. Welcome to Goof On, everybody. I'm your host, Rich Giordano. We are live! It is September 25th, 2022. How the hell are you? We're going to talk about some interesting stuff tonight. I hope you have pen and paper ready to go. I almost said pen and pencil. I'm going to write on my pencil with my pen. That's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> um, we're going to do Goof on University tonight. That's right. I was going to do it next week. But I figured I'd do it tonight. A little surprise in the surplus of the Goof on Information Facility. You know as Go- Goof on. <laughs> that wasn't that hard. Oh, no. Hold on. Oh, no. I don't want this background. It's supposed to be uh, the building that I got here. Hey. They won't let me up. To- now, StreamYard won't allow you to add something new during a live show. You used to three weeks ago. I was able to download a picture, put it into StreamYard to put it on behind me. And they took that away from us again. There they are. We'll put those, all of these guys. They're all in trouble. I don't know. Uh, Goof on University tonight. We will talk about. What, what, what? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. No, 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 no. I want to do this right. Let me pull up my own thumbnail. All right. We're going to talk about. Taking advice. If you want to be a real ufologist and get into ufology, UFO hunt, paranormal hunt, it, it all it all works the same. All these things I'm applying tonight to your skill set will make you a better ufologist. Capiche? Oh, you're not special. Oh, no, not even me. Not even this guy. Oh, what about Lou? 
Baby Lou, Baba Lou, Boo Hoo Lou, The Creepers. How to deal with the creepers. What are the creepers? Uh, well, maybe I don't know. All right, and use your instincts. Huh? Can you do that for me? Some people like to call your instincts critical thinking. But I found out something on the way. I found out that people who did not finish high school, who's, and I'm not, I'm sorry, it's the truth. People with a low grade, never finished high school, never even got to high school. Uh, those people are hard to convince that they're wrong. You know, a lot of people with the pareidolia, the clouds, the mountains are monsters. They're just in a coma for a million years or so. You know, those people, flat earthers. Oh, so you know who you are. All right, let's do a little bit. Of Sometimes when you're speaking, the volume. Oh, really? Oh, the volume's going in and out. Okay. Well, that's interesting. I noticed there was something wrong. Let me take a look. I, I thought it was just on my end. Let me see if there's something I can do. Is everybody uh, having a problem hearing me? I'm going to check on. Uh, well, I have to check the live show to see if it's if it is happening. Because I noticed before the show, I always do a sound check. And I noticed the levels weren't, it was like they were delayed. It was weird. All right, so let's, let's see, maybe, because there's nothing I have done that can change that. I can't fix that. That's a StreamYard or a YouTube thing, unfortunately. Let's see. Let's see. I'm going to say a bunch of words and we'll see. Let's so see. far, everything seems to be working perfectly on my Let's end. Let's see. I'm going to say uh, a bunch of words, and we'll see. Yeah, so far, it's working so perfectly. Far, seems uh, I don't know what to say. That may be on your end, uh, but everything's working fine here. And uh, I could already tell, because I listened to it just now, that it's not happening on my end. So, you know, maybe you have to refresh the page. Um, What's up, everybody? I was just about to do roll call, and I had a message. It cut out a minute ago. Yeah, thank you, Sheila Aliens. Welcome to the show. We'll start off with you. Roll call. Real quick roll call, though. Samo, Gufonian rock star. Welcome to the show. Mark D. Truth Searcher. Where's the U.S.? Welcome to the show. Rebecca, the wild one. Welcome to the show. D's House Genetics. Welcome to the show. Frapsap. Hey, man. Good to see you. Welcome to the show. Sky Allen as well. Welcome to the show. Coral Ann. Welcome to the show, Coral Ann. Cash 45. How you doing? Welcome to the show. Jose Sanchez. Welcome to the show, Mr. S. All right, Bernie. There you are. Bernie Muro, everybody. Hello, Bernie. Ah, the announcer said hi to you. Yeah, usually he, you know. Death Proof Bum Zero One is here. Garrett Smith, both of you, welcome to the show. Paula Faust, show welcomes you. And that's that's it. Quick, quick hello to those who are here quickly. Gustav Van Vieren, love that name, man. And I say it perfectly every time, which I think in my mind, because of my dyslexia, I don't know how I read that correctly, but in my mind, I'm like, don't screw it up, don't screw it up, don't screw it up. I did it. Yeah. Mass sighting last night. Of a rock. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, those things. It's amazing what people will do when they see those things. It's a, it's a UFO. It's out of control, you know, because it gives that. Because all the, you know, the way the, the fuel is being spilt out of the craft, spent fuel, whatever the hell you call it, vapors, whatever they're doing in the atmosphere and it changes and it looks kind of cool. It's, it's really awesome. Uh, I don't know if they're going to do the Artemis launch. I was looking to go to it since it's in my neighborhood. As you know, it would be Tuesday at 1030 in the morning. And I don't mind driving down there, but the hurricane is coming. But it won't be here until late Wednesday, Thursday. They don't know yet. It could speed up, slow down, change direction. But 
the course is heading straight for where I live, Tampa. You understand? Bernie! What's up, Mr. M? First super chat of the night. That's right. I forgot. See, I don't even care about money. Don't care. Hell, that's all he does is beg up my Thank you very much for being the first. Uh, where is it? I'm going to give you the, the, the this one. Thank you, Bernie Muro, for the $5 super dono. First one of the night. It's all love. That good. All over those who usually don't come here. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Mucho gusto, generoso. Mr. Bernie LaRusso. Are you guys watching... Um, Cobra Kai, yikes, it's great. I love it. Uh, I'm not going to talk any more about it because I haven't continued watching, but I will tonight, maybe. Thanks, Bird. All right, let's get this going. Now, have you seen the new logo for the, uh, what is it, the Defense Intelligence? We'll start off with that. I'm so, I, I don't know why they're doing, I don't understand for the Office of the Director of National Intelligence. There's a, a little UFO in it. No, it's a disc. Yeah, I'm going to show you. I, I can't believe this is in there. Look at that right here. If that's not a UFO, I don't know what is. But, you know, you have your stealth, you have your commercial, you've got your drones, uh, and you've got UFOs. How does that happen? NIM aviation, not in Mexico. Isn't that what that means? They don't they don't have aviation in Mexico. I know that's not what it means. Chill, chill. Hey, who's that guy? I see somebody. Jeff Garvey throwing down a five spot. Thanks for being a member, Jeff, as well. Be brave, Rich, in the face of hurricane. Long live Cobra Kai. <laughs> I know. I will, my friend. I actually, I bought an umbrella. I never owned an umbrella because I lived in Arizona, you know, for 40 something years. And uh, I bought an umbrella today. It's the large one. I'm going, all right, all right, let's talk about this UFO real quick. Jeff, thank you very much. And then I'm going to talk about what's going to be happening on the channel this week. Um, Jeff, thank you for the $5. You're a continuing supporter of Goofon. And, uh, I appreciate that, my friend. Okay, so uh, this is really odd, right? I mean, what else can I say? There's not much else I can say. They put a UFO on their patch or whatever you want to call this thing. Is that significant? Is it? Because I think it is. I think they're fucking with us, man. I think they're playing with us. This has got to be their joke on us. Why didn't they put a Tic Tac in there? Because mm -hmm. the Tic Tac is probably ours. They don't want to put that on. They should have put one here. And look where it's at. Look, I'm the only one who pointed this out. It's on the southern peninsula of North America which is where they have those freaking crazy sightings of discs that we think are balloons. Because they probably are, but I mean, maybe they're not, but they look like this. This. Is that the sports model? No, Bob. Because it looks like my sports model. Bob Lazar, everybody. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Shut up. So stupid. <laughs> so I don't, I think they're telling us a secret. We are going, look, 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 look what I just figured out. Everything you see here is doing what? Protecting the United States Eastern Seaboard and Canada. This part of the United States, the, well, I, the financial region of the United States. You got Washington, you got New York, you got Wall Street. You've got, you know what I mean? You got, uh, even Florida is a little covered up here, but not that it means anything, but it means they're defending from this UFO. Will they be, is this the false flag alien invasion put on a patch? Are they telling us they're going to protect us against these that are coming out where?
from the Catalina is where they've seen the Tic Tac and the Nimitz and 04, 90, uh, 2015, 19, and even today, Jeremy Corbell said, they're still shooting at them. They're shooting at them. Well, that that's somewhere else, but that's just if you weaponize your curiosity with freaking mushrooms and shit, you can come up with what Jeremy Corbell said. I have from a special source that I cannot reveal who said that we are still, we are shooting at UFOs. Oh, right. right. No proof. Nobody's ever said anything about that. How are they going to say that? That is something that is a, a security issue. If there were, if we were protecting our troops on the grounds from UFOs and other parts of the country, as Corbell put it, this patch may be a sign of things to come. You look at all the things we found in the dollar bill when it came to 9-11. You can actually see the towers going down when you fold it a certain way. Or I think that's if you grab the 1, the 5, the 10, the 20, and it shows the buildings coming down lower and lower and lower in each one. Weird shit like that. They put it right in our face. Why? Why? Because they're, they're marking their legacy. And this isn't about anything but legacy. What's happening in ufology right now. It's a selfish act. This is a joke. And or it isn't. But they are. Lou, all those guys, they just care about their legacy. And they'll lie, cheat, and steal. As you know, they broke the law to get those three videos. And, you know, we snuck them out of the Pentagon. Snuck them out of the Pentagon. If I did that, rules for thee, not for me. I should say laws for thee, not for me. But ufology right there. They're telling us when, uh, I'm sorry, where the invasion will take place. And it'll be over the eastern part, probably over New York. And they're, these are the UFOs that are hiding out in the southern, in the Pacific. And I think that patch is a warning. I really freaking do. It's They don't do anything like that. There's no, first of all, why do that? Because that's admitting that they're defending against UFOs, in my opinion. That does not look like a stealth. It does not look like uh, an airplane that's coming right at me and the black is, you know, the disturbance in the air from the uh, propulsion. No, that's a UFO. That's a disc. That's Bob Lazar's disc. It's, it's his disc. It's the Sparks model. And, uh, and they're telling us where it's coming from. And this might be a false flag alien invasion patch of things to come. My God, they're going to war. What if Corbell's right? No. Oh. Hmm. What if Corbell is not lying? Are you lying to me? Are you? Why has he got the cone head? Jeremy Corbell could be an important factor in all of this. He could be telling the truth, but isn't giving us the video evidence to back it up. And that's done on purpose. But maybe what Jeremy is saying is true. What if it is? You have to look at it both ways, people. You can't just say, you know, your way is the right way. What if he's telling the truth? First of all, I don't think he is. Second of all, he never, uh, he has no credibility, in my opinion, in this field with anything he's done. And I'm not the only one who thinks that because we all know Skinwalker's bullshit. There may be something going on over there, but nothing more than what's going on over here. I mean, at my house, nothing more. Maybe imaginations running wild. People wanting that 15 minutes of fame. I mean, when Brandon Fugel has everything a man would want, what's left? Ego. Self-gratitude. Self-preservation. <laughs> I love when people say that. Self-preservation. 
he's trying to build a legacy for himself in this community with the shittiest place on earth. And eventually he's going to sell that land and he's going to make it a, a place where the rich and the open-minded gullible can go play around with these things. It's dangerous, dangerous, dangerous road. They'd be going down if they did that knowing that there's a hitchhiker waiting in the barn behind the barn. Oh, don't go to Skinwalker. You might get one of them hitchhikers, huh? They may come to your house and, uh, I don't know, rape your wife. As a story was told. <laughs> as a story was told. You know who told that story. That guy about that thing. You know the thing. If they can talk like that, I'm going to talk that way. You know the thing, right? You know the thing. If you want to fit in, you got to fit in. I don't want to fit in. I don't want to believe this shit. Um, I don't. It's just really strange, right? I mean, that's strange to put that on a patch. I think it's a warning. I think it's a warning. I know I went off on a Corbell rant. Excuse me. I've got, I've got some pent up frustration towards that guy. Uh, all right. Oh, thank you for uh, the com comments. I, yeah, I saw them earlier and I forgot to say thank you. Yeah, ACDC, come on. The shittiest band with the, the greatest songs. And they're amazing. And one of the best guitarists. All right. All right. But they're, they're such a simple band. I mean, that's that's all you got to do is just make it simple, fun, anthem. Yeah, yeah. Shook me out. I mean, it doesn't get, they don't make songs like that anymore. All right. So now I hear... There was an interview done with uh, Stephen Pierce, the guy who was the youngest guy that was in the Travis Walton thing. And he was on the Alien Addict show with me and Ali, me and Ali. And now he went on another show and is saying the opposite. That it's a hoax. He didn't say that when he was on our show, well, Ali's show, excuse me. Ollie's show, <laughs> flip-flopping again. This is what happens with these people. Why are they doing it? They're all flip-flopping, except for Travis. He can't flip-flop. If he said, yeah, I hoaxed it, he'll never recover from it. So he can't do that, but everybody else can. Travis is the only one keeping his shit together, while his friends or whatever are flip-flopping on him every chance they get. I couldn't believe it. Like, so he lied. He's a bold-faced liar. You cannot trust Stephen Pierce. Is he doing that on purpose? Is he trying to distance himself like he did when he didn't want to be associated with this shit back in the 70s when it happened? He hated this shit. Hated it. Didn't want anything to do with it. When they all had, wasn't it him? When they all had their picture taken with the $5,000 split split between them all, he wasn't there. He, he wasn't there. He didn't want to take the picture. Smart man. But here he is saying one thing and now flip-flopping saying another. And this is the ufology we live in. So how do you trust somebody? Would you trust your boyfriend or girlfriend to do that? That's how you have to relate this stuff. Put it into your life. If somebody was put in that situation and they kept flip-flopping, would you trust them? No. Could they be telling the truth and lying at the same time? No. I had to think about that. Well, because all everybody supposedly saw the light hit Travis. And in one interview, Pierce says, Travis just fell back. When he was on our show, 
he said threw him right like didn't he throw him about 15 feet and he looked like a rag doll or was that mike huh now i'm now i'm confused yeah well that's what happens when you hit 55 four four hey what do you say to everybody coming in steve pierce is one of the seven witnesses to travis walton 75 ufo and abduction I've been corresponding with him. By the way, this is from, uh, I think it's Charlie Weiser, this article. Yeah, I think, let me, let me make sure. It's a short article. Uh, yeah, Charlie Weiser. Oh, oh, Charlie replied to me. All right, let me pull it up. I, I have it here. So I wrote, check out the two interviews done with Mike Rogers and another show a week earlier with Pierce. I was co-hosting those shows with Holly. You may want to listen to these interviews because we asked those hard questions that can answer some of the things written here. And Charlie said, yes, I watched those interviews. Mike talks a good game and uh, nobody ever asks him the hard questions. I wrote about one of his interviews here. Well, I thought we asked him everything there is to ask. Maybe we didn't. Yeah, maybe we didn't. But there, there's an interview here that Charlie gave me to listen to. So I'm going to check that out. It's on Twitter. It's called Like It Matters 3. So I'll check that out. Pretty interesting, though, what, what was written here. So uh, a reflexive, here, let me pull it up. A reflexive reaction from many experiencers is to assume skeptics are accusing them of lying. I have always told Steve, I think he was duped. And he has always struck me as someone very concerned with getting the details right. He was initially angry with me for explaining the many indications this incident was a hoax. And even when we came to a friendlier understanding, he has been reluctant to consider the possibility. That's, that's weird. So it sounds like he's fighting his own personal demons. Hey, there's nothing I can do about the audio. If it's crackling, coming and going, that's the internet, man. I, I don't know what to tell you. But for the most part, it's it's working 99% of the time, right? Am I right? I'm going to stop the show real quick, and I'm asking, because I want to know. Can you people tell me if the sound is generally good 95% of the show? Because I have no control over it. So I, I don't know what to tell you. It's got to be my internet connection, your internet connection. It could be the internet, YouTube. I don't know. But everybody says 90, 98. Okay. Sounds great. It's great. Yes. You good. You good. That's all I want. My 80, you know, 98% and higher is fine because I have no control. Oh, wait a second. You hear it as if a wire is loose or something. Oh, that's weird. Huh. Let me see if the connections are tight. That's okay. I understand that. Yeah, that, that sucks. So it's coming and going. All right. It comes and goes. All right. That's fine. I'm glad that it was brought up. Well, I'm not going to. All right. I'll unplug it. And here we go. We'll see if that works. Let me make sure the setting didn't move. Because I, I rarely move anything. I uh, If it worked for the way, if it sounds good from day one, I don't touch it and it shouldn't change, you know. I don't know what AFK means. Okay. Everything's loud and clear. We're fine. Um, but that's good because I need to know if things are working. All right. Cash 45 threw down nine bucks and New Zealand five. Sounds good at my end, brother. All right. Good. Slight fade in and out. We've had this before. Uh, let me see something. All 
All right, now I'm going to do a speed test. I have to. That, that, that's where we're at right now. No, we're, we're going to do the speed test now. Okay, here we go. Everybody's going to watch. Computer's turning up. There we go. All right. Spectrum, Tampa, go. I may do it twice. It should be 9.30. Ooh. And, and then it should be 40. Up. It's usually around 9.33, 9.35. Here we go. Like I said, now it should be 40. Usually the first time it drops to like 15 to 10. And when I redo it, oh, it's not dropping. So it'll get up to 40 and that's it. Never goes higher than 40. So we're running fine. The internet's fine on my end, as you can tell. So not bad, not bad with the 7 MS. So I'll take that. Usually that, that gets down to 3 MS and I'm rocking. So maybe it's a little slow. No, it's not slow. All right. So there you go. Proof, it's not me. It must be StreamYard or the tube. Capiche? Oh, it's a two capiche show. Back to the hoax. Thank you all for, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Reckless Ryan. You're right on the same page as me, my friend. And I clicked on the wrong thing like a schmohawk. It's all right. It's okay. No, no, there it is. All right, guys. Um, <clears throat> he was initially angry with me for explaining the many indications this incident was a hoax. And even when we came to a friendly understanding, he had been reluctant to consider the possibility. Got it. So he's kind of thinking there's no way it was a hoax. Even so, he did express doubts about parts of the story. He considers Travis to be a liar and the kind of guy who went to a party and everyone else left. He says Mike never paid him and told lies about him that ended up in Travis's book and which Travis refuses to correct. These things may seem trivial in the grand scheme of things, but they're important to him. A few days ago, Steve wrote to me, it was a hoax. All right. You see, I think he doesn't know shit that it was a hoax. He just can't come with the realization that he saw a UFO. And what makes more sense to him 40 something years later was that he was hoaxed. Mike Rogers said there's no way anybody would have known there's no way the tower the light tower there could have been the ufo right he's basically said we're not fucking stupid we would know this thing shot a beam down travis would thrown back that's the story and if it's a lie nobody can prove it So we have to go with, you know, two of the witnesses have already died. So we've got five left. Three of them are fighting and one doesn't want to talk about shit. It's not easy to accept. This goes on. Or even entertain the notion that the incident that terrorized you as a teenager put you in the hot seat for murder, made you a laughing stock around town and ruined your life, was a prank perpetrated by your coworker and your boss. Steve told me he jumped on the bandwagon when interest in the story was renewed leading up to the Travis documentary in 2015. He played along, for example, admitting to Erica Luke's that he would jokingly exaggerate about Travis getting flung 20 feet through the air by a beam when in reality he only fell back. Oh, so he lied to us. So he just came on the show on Alien Addicts show and lied to us. What a guy. What a fucking dick. I got to say something. You know, 
you're friendly to people, you look them in the eye through the video recorder, whatever, you know, you think you're getting the truth and now you're just getting mush and you wonder why this field I hate so much, but love, love the game. I love this game like you wouldn't believe. You know, you know what it's like to be one of the few people saying the right thing, at least in my opinion. See, that's the thing in this field. People don't know. We, I don't know if I'm saying the right thing, but to me, it feels right. That's what everybody should be saying. Nobody knows the facts. We all believe different things, and that's okay. That's okay. I don't care if you believe what you believe, but I want to talk about it. And if it sounds silly and there's evidence to the contrary, then you're stupid or I'm stupid. I don't mind admitting I made a mistake. You guys do. That's the problem with this field. The egos are so big. We get a 40-year-old story being muddied in front of our faces because who has the bigger dick in this, in this uh, situation? That's all it is. A couple of high school guys. And you know, thousands upon thousands of people have related to that story. And to know if it was fake would be devastating. Nah, it wouldn't be. Because everybody still, it's your own experience. Nobody really gives a shit. I have to, you have to really be honest with yourself. Nobody would care. if you, Look, hey, we found out Travis is a hoax. Uh, all right. Well, kind of kind of figured. So what else is new? Years ago, Steve, with the help of his then wife, wrote a book unpublished, unpublished, giving his perspective. He believed the UFO was ours, not ET, and that Travis was subjected to mind control. He has at times quoted chapters on his Facebook page or emailed them to me. Uh, the book recounts that his two uncles and a cousin quit Mike's crew on the Friday before the Wednesday incident because Mike didn't pay them. Steve wanted to quit too, but his mom made him go and keep working. Jean Goulet and Dwayne Smith were new recruits to replace the men who'd quit. Now, Steve tells me the real reason his uncles quit was because they didn't want to participate in the hoax. <gasps> they were tired of Travis and his alien. Shh. That's all Travis ever talked about, him and Mike. Oh my God, they're such babies, right? Now you know why we go to war because of the mentality like this. These are grown men, but your differences aside. Travis did fail that. You know, they were supposed to get but since Travis failed the lie detector test, they only gave them 5,000 to split amongst them. Way to go, Travis. Yeah. You know, deep down in my gut, I don't think it was a UFO. I think it was a hoax. It's just me. But I tell you what, this Travis has a twist on it. This Travis story is going to have a twist because when this guy, Steve Pierce, is on his deathbed and then Travis, well, Travis will never break character. He's always going to be the guy who was abducted by aliens. But I think people who are on their deathbed may tell us the truth. It was a hoax. We were all in on it. the lie detector test. Travis didn't because what makes sense is they didn't know that Mike and Travis were hoaxing. They thought they were seeing a real UFO because Mike was probably going, it's a damn UFO or something. What did he say? Didn't he say something like that? Or what is it? What is it? He got them pumped up. And remember when I asked Mike, I don't know if you remember, but remember that rumor that Travis and, and 
Mike were the kids in the neighborhood that were running around saying, we were abducted by aliens. We saw aliens and UFOs. He denied that. And he sounded truthful. He's like, what? I, I go, you never heard that before? And he's like, no. And I'm like, yeah, that's been thrown around a lot because, you know, people are trying to discredit you. It's so wild, isn't it? Dang it. Burn my finger again. I knew that was hot. Um, so anyway, now Steve tells me the reason his uncles quit because they didn't want to participate in the hoax. Bop, ba, da, ba, da. Steve's uncle had a theory that Gentry Tower was used as the UFO because he'd seen it lit up before. While Travis was missing and the men were under suspicion of murder, he took Steve to show him the tower while it was not lit up. Understandably, Steve did not want to believe that his very real terror was the result of a prank. Steve relayed this to me months ago when he still thought the story was essentially true. As Steve went over and over the events of that night, he remarked that things Mike told him over the years were starting to make more sense. Mike has now admitted in October 24 last year to go to going missing that day, claiming he was running flags to mark off the tree thinning contract. Steve tells me the real reason was to check if the watcher in the tower had gone home at 5 p.m. This would set the stage for the crew leaving the work site in the dark. Perfect viewing for the UFO if an accomplice could climb up into the tower to operate the lights. Guys, everybody, this story hangs in the balance of who was the person that was up in the tower. They don't even, t Charlie Weiser doesn't even talk about it anymore. That's the only mention of an accomplice. Once we find out who that person is, supposedly it was Mike's girlfriend or something, right? Or Travis's girlfriend, maybe, I don't know. But if that person comes forward and admits that they work the light from the tower or lights, case closed. Game over, man. Game over. Aliens. Why don't you put her in charge? She survived here for 13 days. With no food, no water, no one else to help her. Well, why don't you put her in charge? Um. That's it. You either believe or you don't. And I don't think that the, t the Gentry Tower could have been misidentified or thought it was a UFO. And these guys know where they're at. No? You would know the difference, right? I think I would know. I wouldn't think that was a UFO. First of all, I thought... The UFO was moving, and then when they drove away a quarter of a mile or so and then stopped, they turned around and saw the UFO take off. They saw it streak across the sky. So, yeah, there's that. So I don't think it was a gentry tower. Now I believe that Travis was abducted. See? I can't figure it out. And I... And I'm listening to the guy who was there saying Travis hoaxed it. That means he hoaxed it. Yeah. Uncle, unlike uncles, unlike Steve's uncles who refused to participate, Mike's wife at the time reluctantly told me that Mike was roped into it as payback for some of his crew smoking weed on their breaks. Steve is fed up with the emails he gets about this story. I'm tired of being kicked. Tell people out there in ufology, fuck you. He said goodbye, not for the first time, to be honest, and wished me good luck. Travis Walton's case is often cited as one of the best because of the multiple witnesses who never recanted. There is not one scrap of evidence for a flying saucer and alien abduction other than witness testimony. Travis and Mike are lying to the world and gaslighting their former co-workers, their friends, 
and the hosts of various podcasts and conferences. Two of the innocent witnesses are dead. Of the remaining three, Ken Peterson's statue status <laughs> is unknown. Jean Goulet insists Travis has never lied to him. And Steve Pierce has realized it was all a hoax. After I wrote Mike's ex-wife's story, he ranted out me, at me about getting custody of their kids. That was his reaction to accusations of being a wife beater and a scheming gaslighting hoaxer, not denials, but anger over his divorce being allegedly misrepresented. I had to prompt him to remember to deny the rest. Meanwhile, Travis is careful only to ever engage with, fam with friendly hosts and fans. Multiple well-known personalities in ufology continue to believe, support, and platform Travis Walton, Jerem, uh, uh, Jimmy Church. I don't understand how a man bears such a stain on his conscience. Travis may have merely been an obnoxious prankster as a young man, but as an old one, he's something much, much worse. That whole story right there, there's no evidence to back it up. You see what I mean? Charlie Weiser usually does great work. But if it doesn't go towards the beliefs that Charlie believes, you go after the character. It's what I do. Well, it's what I learned to do. You got to go after the character if you... Oh, wait. I don't really... Do I? Yeah, maybe I do. I don't know. Didn't think I was. That's the story, Morning Glory. Do you believe Travis Walton, Mike Rogers, or Stephen Pierce? The balls in your court. Until next time, Goof on You begins. So I want to talk about a few things. Get your pens and papers out. That's right, multiples. Multiple pens and papers. Because we're going to go over a few things right now. What did I miss? I didn't get any messages. Oh, I did. Oh. Oh, Death Proof Bum 01, thank you. Thank you for the $5.22 PayPal support. Awesome. Yeah, I'm sorry I was a little late on that. But uh, yeah, thank you very much, Death Proof Bum 01. A big mucho gusto generoso to you, sir. <laughs> I'm such a weirdo. I'd like to switch that saying up, but I don't know. I don't know what to go to next. I'll think about it. You got your pens and papers out? Coral, you got your pens and papers? Everybody? You're not special. I'm sorry your mother told you you were special, but you're not. For those of you who are seeing aliens in clouds, monsters in mountains, living on a flat earth, how could there be a hollowed flat earth? Somebody brought that question up last week and I was like, hmm, is that FAP who said that? It was a good, it was a good, good thought. You either believe one or the other, you can't have both. Unless earth is, you know, boop. Maybe it's flat, but it's oblate. <laughs> uh, it ain't flat. <clears throat> COVID. So you're not special. What do I mean by that? That sounds rude. I'm not special. You're not special. I had a, I had a, <clears throat> somebody sent me some evidence they wanted me to look at. This is an example. <clears throat> COVID, <clears throat> COVID. Bernie Muro with the five, another $5. Super, super dono. Thank you. That's a big mucho gusto, generoso kind of thing. Bernie, you understand? Thank you. Continuing supporter of Goof on. I mean, 
th this this person sent me stuff that was all pareidolia and asked me take a look at this tell me what you see i said uh i see a bird i see a plane i see a bat i see pareidolia and i laid it out very nicely and professionally i'm not rude to people unless they're rude to me right <clears throat> For the most part so well not in this situation i always try to be very professional when i'm talking to people until they start naming you know saying dude you don't believe anything i shouldn't have even trusted you and i said very nicely look i, I there's a reason why i don't talk about this stuff on the show because holy shit, that's a hundred dollars hey whoa all i hey no Whoa, wow, thank you. I saw the red and then I'm like, oh my God, because red, there's another red where it's, you know, under five, under two or whatever. But Jesus H, F-A-P, that's a big mucho gusto generoso too. Yeah, for that one, you know, hold your ears, everybody. We got to celebrate a hundred dollars. Thank you, F-A-P. For the support of a hundred dollars at Gush. Thanks, man. I don't, I don't know what to say, except thank you. No, nope. yep, I did. I just pooped. Shit my pants. <laughs> oh, it's weird. Thank you very much, man. That's extremely generous. Uh, uh, it still makes me feel weird to get super chats like that. Thank you, man. I'm like, how do people afford that shit? Thanks. That's a uh, that's huge. Uh, so you're not special, FAP. You are. Uh, but um, so this person, you know, I kindly said what I thought was honest and sincere. And then I got an email today and let me just give you a little bit of what I got yelled at. And I'm assuming I got yelled at. I'm not going to say the person's name because I respect them and, and they're just trying to do the right thing. I understand. But if I'm giving you advice and telling you, I think it's just pareidolia because I don't think that shit is real. I get this. If I'm a fraud, then what the hell are these? First of all, I never said anybody was a fraud. I just said it's pareidolia most likely. Although I'm not there, you know, I'm not there. I don't know for 100% sure, but 99.999% of the time, that's pareidolia if it's in a cloud. I see a bird, I see a bat, I see a shoe. And and you're telling me these are monsters, that the clouds are 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 alien beings that are morphing right in front of us? Mm -mm -mm. Doesn't make sense. And I like to live in a reality that anybody can say anything about clouds, you know? So I said, I'm not saying you're a fraud, but I've made the same mistakes. And I didn't just settle because it fit what I thought it should be. You're creating something it isn't because you want to believe so badly. And then I told this person, I spent 11 months going outside every morning, every night, sometimes 14 hours a day, thinking I was recording UFOs when they were Iridium flare satellites. Someone who had more experience than me at the time explained how he debunked what I was recording and proved it to me. I didn't just say, screw this guy. I think they're UFOs. He proved it to me and explained it. And I never went outside again looking for Iridium flare satellites because somebody with way more experience than me was telling me I was wrong. Imagine spending 11 months and recording 1500 things in the sky that looked like UFOs to you only to find out they're not. You would think I'd be mad, right? I was happy because I learned a valuable lesson. I don't know everything. So, 
you know, that's awfully nice to write. And then I continued on a little bit longer. But, you know, you're not special. There's, there's not UFOs flying around your house. You may have some paranormal activity and everything else, but the evidence you're supplying doesn't match the claim. As a matter of fact, it doesn't match the paranormal. It's just pareidolia. And explaining this to somebody who wants to believe that they're special, that the UFOs, where's everybody else seeing this stuff? You know, you think millions of people would be recording this if it was true. If what you're saying is true and the word got out, don't you think people would be looking at the sky? So, or the mountains when they're hiking on it, stabbing it with their spears? Why doesn't it wake up when we put a shovel into it or rip a tree off its back? Anyway, ripping a tree off the mountain is like pulling hairs out of your head. No, it's much worse. It's much, much worse. You're not special. That's the, the, the point is, there are special people out there. They're hard to find, but I have yet to find anybody myself included. I have yet, wait, what? Well, I mean like with UFO evidence, I'm including myself in this, even though I've had experiences that I know happened, I can't prove some of them. It's always funny, the most important things that happen, we never have our cameras out for. Because I've got several stories, you know, and, and all this shit, like you would think somebody like me would be able to capture some of this stuff. That's why I don't think I've captured I think I've captured something unexplainable a few times, but I just haven't figured it out yet. I mean, I'm really negative, even on myself, even on my own stuff. When I show you guys those videos, don't you know it pains me to see their dots? Shit, but those, jot, those dots formed constellation and a question mark and things that I had thought about the night before. It was freaking weird. So that I don't want uh, that stuff we can't talk about just yet. You have to believe that you're not special, this shit happens randomly. And how many times do you think you're going to see UFOs and aliens? How many? Do you think it's, it's that often that somebody's seeing them on the regular? If that was the case, wouldn't, wouldn't there be a, a military outfit out there doing something about it? You would see all the, the craft. No, oh, you do see craft sometimes. You do. Yeah, that's just a random jet flying by. That had nothing to do with what you say you're seeing every night. You're not that special. And critical thinking is the most important thing in this field. If your common sense cannot tell you that what you're looking at isn't a plane, a bug, a bird, a balloon, a drone, and so on, you've got problems. And... And I know people who've been in this field who can't figure it out. They can't. They think they're special. I'll throw somebody out there, Whitley Strieber. No evidence, but people believe him because he sounds like he's telling the truth, doesn't he? Yeah. He's a writer, an author, a published, uh, accomplished author and storyteller. He's no different than the guy who wrote Scientology. What is that, Dianetics? Yeah, no different, just storytelling. This guy's got no evidence. Bothers me though, but people look up to him. And let me tell you something, if people are really being abducted, it's nice to know there's somebody out there who can make them feel better. I get it. I get it. I understand it. It's a very, very, very difficult situation people are put in when they're being abducted or think they're being abducted. It must be the worst of the worst to go through what some of these people went through. But if you look into the history of some of these people, you'll find that they had childhood experiences that aren't mm, normal. So... People think it's it's the body reacting and changing things to make you disassociate with the events of your pre, you know, your early life. 
it's sad. But if that's true, that's weird. You know, dreaming of aliens to offset the mental issues you're having with what happened to you in your past. Why would aliens show up? Did, I can't believe what I'm seeing. You see these hands? Jesus. What are you doing? Wow. All right. I know. Look at it. It's real. You see it? Yeah, he's looking right at it. She, she, sorry. Stop. You can get down now. Stop it. I know you can't. I think I killed her. Thank you, FAP. Are you trying to kill me? Are you going to give me a heart attack? Oh, my God, dude. Thank you so much, man. Here, let's give you this one. Thank you, FAP, for the million dollars support to go. Oh, a hundred dollars support to Goofon. That's a freaking amazing guy. All over the other hundred. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, I'm so stupid. All right. I, I you know, thank them. God bless, man. I mean, you have no idea. I, I yeah, anyway. Hold on. <coughs> okay. We're all caught up. FAP. Seriously, alien bless, man. <clears throat> God bless you. Thank you very much. It's freaking... Uh... Oh, I was going to talk about the hurricane. <coughs> Before I get into more goof on you. So, you're not special. That's my point, people. And those up there in the balcony, thank you for buying tickets way up there. $2 a piece. <coughs> hey, Bernie Miro. Thank you. Oh, it's not time yet. Oh, okay. Bernie Miro with the $2 super, super duper chat. It's a super dono. Because I don't know who much, but I know I love you. Thank you, FAP. FAP throwing down the two spot. Every bit helps the goof. It all goes to the same person, the same entity, which um, which keeps the show going, believe it or not. So thank you very much. Bernie Muro, continuing supporter of Goof On. Throwing down tonight. It's your third one, isn't it? Man, thank you. So the hurricane's coming. And uh, in the next few days, the, ne the next few days, yeah, oh yeah, thank you, Heather Birdie. $2 goof on after dark. You're a continuing supporter of goof on as well. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. I like goof on after dark. I, uh, I, I wish I could use that. Maybe I can. But thank you, Heather Birdie. Coral, hold on a sec. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, I was just saying, hold on a second. <laughs> I didn't want to say why. Holy shit balls on fire. Cash 45? That's $100 too, dude. Right? It's the same color. No, it's too late now. That's amazing. <laughs> it's so weird. It's such a weird night. Um, so thank you for that. My God. 
What? Oh, he's alive. He's alive. She's alive. Why is that going off? We're already talking about it. Oh, I'm sorry. I did that. Okay. I didn't think. I know. I thought Coral did it. It's okay. I can't believe what she just said to me and I'm not going to repeat it. I'm not. What? Oh no, she hit her head. Oh no, are you okay? Are you okay? Oh shit. <laughs> I can't stop. I'm four, 54 years old playing with this stupid... Thank you. Uh you guys are making me nutty, Cash45. Thank you very much, man. That's that's an amazing uh, support, everybody. Uh, <laughs> this is such a weird night. I can't speak. Um, thanks. It's huge. Uh, and we got to throw down. Well, let's throw down something different. Do we have anything different? No. Nope. Let's scream. <laughs> Thank you, Cash45, New Zealand, for the 169, 99, 170, 400. Thank you, guys. I mean, thank you. Because in the next few days, a lot of things can go down where I'm living with this Category 5. It will be a 4, I was told. It's going to be a hurricane tomorrow, and apparently it's heading right for Florida, Tampa area. And they're putting up the warnings. I went to go, I went to the food store, the grocery store. Somebody got on me for saying the food store. I picked that up from an old girlfriend who used to say the food store. She was from Arkansas, and I just picked it up, and I always liked it. It's easy, the food store. No water. Almost all of the uh, insure, like, drinks and everything in bottles that have nutrition, the things that I've been drinking for a month, they were all out. And I, I got one. So I got that and a few tall bottles of water that people didn't want for some reason, maybe because they were three bucks each. Uh, but this hurricane is supposed to be pretty bad. You never can tell, but they've been screaming that it's going to be bad. And they're, let's, hmm. that was weird. Hurricane Florida. Let me pull it up. I want to show you. Oh, wait, hold on. Let's make sure this is it. You know, I am excited. I'm excited for this, but I am with caution, I am not as excited as I once was because people were telling me that there's never been a hurricane that directly came right here in the last 94 years. I talked to a man who was 94 who lives where I live and he says, there's never been a hurricane here. I go, so you mean to tell me we've never had hurricane force winds hitting this neighborhood 43 years ago? That's right. Holy crap, you kidding me? That's amazing. Not one hurricane came through. Well, we had a few. But you see, they were weaker. Uh, but this one might be a doozy. Let's take a list. And it's right in my backyard. What if my I am going to... What if I when it's getting close, I am going to drive out to the Gulf of Mexico, which is only 25 minutes from where I live. And I am going to use the drone and get footage ahead of time. Tomorrow I'm going... Let's take a listen. Whoops. Looks more and more likely that Ian will cause devastating impacts See? to Florida. Top sustained winds have quickly cranked up to 65 miles per Go! hour. Tropical storm warnings are up for the Florida Keys and a tropical storm watch is up along the west coast of Florida. Let me show, let me show you where I live. I live right here. Right there. That's almost the center. So either way, it's going to be 120 miles to 130 mile an hour winds at my front freaking door. It's 
going to be a cat four and then a cat three when it hits close to three or four. So I am going to be in over a hundred mile an hour winds with my video camera, my car. I've got, I've already filled up a cooler, um, with ice already, already did it. Cause they're, you're, they're, you're running out of ice everywhere. I have to make the ice. I don't have an ice maker and I've only got four trays. So <clears throat> I am going to probably every time there's something interesting happen, I'll go live wherever I'm at on location. This is going to be almost equivalent to what third phase of moon did when the volcano erupted three years ago, except this is going to be, well, not as deadly as what they were in, but, uh, I would never, I don't, those guys, what they did, I, I would have done it with them, but I, I, I gotta tell you, I, I probably wouldn't have done it if I was by myself. Um, those guys took a risk of the ground caving in around them. They could have fallen into their death. Honestly. I mean, I could die too, but the odds of me dying far, far less. So let's not kid ourselves. A volcano is nothing like a hurricane, but when the hurricane comes, I'm going to witness something I've never witnessed before. And I'm going to be, I don't know, excited. Um, I, I, I plan on sleeping in my car. I already have a location all picked out to where I could go and uh, watch this thing come in without being bothered. Plus people are, they're really gearing up. This is, this is amazing. This is amazing. I can't believe I'm in a hurry. I'm go and I, I wanted this. I was, I was doing the law of attraction to bring a hurry. I started this. It's my fault. It's my fault. The devastation. Uh, come on. Cuba will get hit. I mean, what are the odds? There's a hurricane coming to an area that hasn't been hit in over a hundred years. Come on. First with heavy <laughs> rain, flooding and death. Hey, you could even say I created this storm. Oh, maybe I did. What if I'm like Lou Elizondo? I can create anything I want. Oh, 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 that if that happens, I'll be happy. Hold on. Uh -huh. uh. Ah, all right. All right, here we go. Devastating storm surge. Then I'm excited, Ian will Coral. Florida. And by the time Ian gets into the Gulf, it'll be a radically different system than it is right now. Between now and then, it'll have explosive growth in both size and intensity. Oh, that's what now, she it'll said. It'll also be a slow moving system. I'm right here. This is me. I'm going to die. I am going to die. Oh my God. This is going to be the best day of my life. System may be just crawling off the coast of Florida, prolonging already terrible impacts, including damage. Oh my God. Look at me. Seven to 10 inches of rain. I was in a three inch rainstorm two weeks ago and thought that was the greatest thing, but there was no wind. Oh, this is going to be unbelievable. Anybody want? Oh, maybe I should have a goof on party and we could all hang out. Nah, that won't happen. Yeah, you guys will ruin the place. Probably blow the roof off the joint. I mean, the hurricane would. Oh. Yeah, maybe I should have planned that ahead. I didn't think this was going to happen. However, the weather has been suspiciously calm around Arizona. Like... Did I just say Arizona? That's it. It's okay. It's okay. 
So that's what's going on this week. So I don't know if I'm going to be home Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday, whenever this, when, when is it coming in? Uh, what day is that supposed to be? Seven to 10 inches of freaking rain, guys. Look at me. I'm right in the thick of it. I don't remember what they said, what day. 16 inches of rain locally in some places. More likely that Ian will cause devastating impacts to Florida. Top sustained winds have quickly cranked up to 65 miles per hour. Tropical storm warnings are up for the Florida Keys and a tropical storm watch is up along the west coast of Florida. Cuba will get hit first with heavy rain, flooding, and devastating storm surge. Then Ian will head toward Florida. And by the time Ian gets into the Gulf, it'll be a radically different system than it is right now. Between now and then, it'll have explosive growth in both size Wednesday. and intensity. Now, it'll also so be a Thursday. slow system. Maybe oh, my God. Wednesday, Thursday. To Florida, prolonging already terrible impacts. This is amazing. All right. So we've got a couple of days of these shows, and then we're going to be doing the explosive hurricane coverage. Yeah. It's going to be a gas, man. Taking advice. That's the next thing for goof on you. When you are doing your research and you're asking people, take a look at my footage. Take a look at this evidence. What do you think it is? You have to be prepared for the truth. And that's one thing I've seen over the years. People do not have a thick skin when it comes to their own sightings, evidence, whatever. Me too. I defend my stuff. But if they can give me a, a valid explanation and it makes sense, I would go with that. I'm not impartial to any criticism, and I give myself the same amount of criticism I would give you. <clears throat> but then again, I wouldn't show the world a smudge, a bug, you know, those type, type of things. So take advice from people who know, who've made more mistakes than you through trial and error and experiences, which is trial and error. What are the creepers? The creepers are trolls. They creep around looking for your videos, your evidence. If you do not want anybody to see your videos because you know they're going to say something that you're not going to believe in, if you can't handle the truth, if you can't handle criticism, then do not do this publicly. Do it by all means, but keep it behind the scenes. I wouldn't post anything if I, were, if I was anybody anymore. Unless you're trying to make a name for yourself. There's a few people on Twitter that are really trying to push their agenda on us. And it's so obvious now. People don't even give these people uh, any mind, it seems, anymore. It's like, you're going to put up a dot, a smudge, a th nobody anymore. I mean, I'm seeing it all over the place. Nobody believes anything what anybody says anyway, including myself. So you're starting out with that. But when you when you try to tell the creepers that you're right and they're wrong, well, you have to expect that they will try to hurt you in every way possible. Here's the deal. If you have video or any evidence that is uh that meets the criteria of something that we could believe that is paranormal. It's not hoax, it's not fake, it's not a reflection, it's not a bird, plane, drone, whatever. If you can reach that level of evidence and keep your cool and don't get mad, because we saw what happened with UAP New York. Remember that guy? The guy who gave us the, uh, the rubber duck? Andy, what was his name? Andy, Andy Granatelli? Something like that. Andy Bag of Donuts? That guy's a good... Uh, a good explanation, a good example, I should say, of what not to do. Do you remember? I don't know. He went on one of these small shows and was saying, I've got this great evidence. You can't see, you got to pay for it. You want to come down to uh, Utah, wherever it was, the symposium. 
you can pay to see it. Pay to see it. Is it that great? It's amazing. I've had people look at this. I've had uh, 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 experts take a look and they say it's all legit. Meanwhile, we found out that it was birds, a balloon. And then this guy goes on his channel and says, I if you don't want to believe it, then fuck. No, it wasn't him. Wrong guy. He says, if you don't want to believe it, then F you. F you, ufology. Remember, I hate, I hate every one of you then. He was going after everybody. Bad look. Don't do that. You got to keep your calm. Take it from me, somebody who blows a, a fuse every now and then. But a controlled explosion. Because I know what I'm saying and doing. I'm not just saying shit just to say it. I'm saying it because I have something to say that makes sense to me. And I think you should know. Use your instincts. Final thing for tonight at Goofon University. Write this down. Use your instincts. I think I touched on this early in the show. Critical thinking. It's critical thinking. And you're not going to like what I'm about to tell you. But I found this to be true. Those people who do not have a high education, didn't finish high school, stopped when they were in a freshman or sophomore, Stopped, never went to high school. Because a lot of these UFO people, you know, the citizenry of ufology, a lot of these people, not you guys, you don't understand. I get a lot of emails from people we'll never see here on YouTube. I watch your show. Uh, I think I can trust your judgment. Can you tell me what this is? Over the years, there's been so many people that don't really want to be out in public because they don't know what they've captured and they come to me or send me their stuff more than you think they would. People, they appreciate the brutality and honesty. Am I right every time? Probably not. That was hard to say, but I think I am. And if I don't know, I tell someone, I don't know what you captured. Never seen anything like it. The only thing I could liken it to in my experience over the last 18 years is it looks like a bird with its wings closed. So it kind of looks like, you know, an aerodynamic type of UFO. It's a bird, I think, but with a grain of salt. No, pepper. pepper. No, sand. Mm. You got a grain of something. But, you know, you have to use your instincts. So where am I going by telling you about the intelligence of somebody? I don't know what the correlation is, but there is people that are recording things and have a higher education, finish college, have a degree. They are able to accept criticism as bluntly as I give it, which I don't think I'm doing anything bluntly at all. I'm just being truthful. And I'm always nice. I always say, look, I'm not perfect, but here's what I think it is through what evidence that I've seen over the last blah, blah, years. I think it's this. And they'll say, oh, that makes sense. Or, oh, let me look into that. And then they come back and say, oh, it made sense. I find that those people with the higher education, sadly, I don't know why it's that way, but it is. Um, they get it. Uh, they're, they're more accepting of the truth. It's weird. It's like, if your education, and don't get mad at me, people. This is numbers. This isn't me saying it, just to say it. But I've known throughout my 18 plus years and through the evidence seen and the people that are behind it, those two things match up, critical thinking and lack of critical thinking. Jeremy Corbell, we cannot gauge him because he's in mainstream media. I don't even care because he's got an agenda and it's not honest. And personally, he's not one of us. He's in it for the wrong reasons. He's in it for his legacy and his ego. That's it. He wants to be the next George Knapp, Bob Lazar. He'll go down. He already is. He'll go down in history as one of the guys who gave us shitty evidence. 
But I look at Jeremy, and then I look at Ryan and Christopher Bledsoe. Not the brightest bulbs on the tree, in my opinion. Uh, I don't know what Christopher Bledsoe's education, but I know Ryan's isn't, uh, he didn't go to college. I don't think he finished high school. And if I'm wrong about that, uh, I, I'm sorry, um, but I didn't think I was going to talk about this or use him as an example. But I don't think he did go to college. It just doesn't look like it, doesn't sound like it. Um, but that's an example of what I mean. People who want to be special, who can't take criticism the right way, who won't accept the truth, who won't accept that they're not having this experience, but they want to, they don't have the critical thinking. They don't have the, they don't want to accept that what's happening to them, it's all in their mind. But if you ask some people who spend time with the Bledsoe's like uh, Science Bob, spent five days there and says, hey, I saw shit I couldn't explain. No, you were duped. They played you is what happened and you fell for it because your willingness. See, now he's a smart guy, right? Wouldn't you agree? Science Bob is smart. But he lacks critical thinking, in my opinion. He does. He believes in shit. You shouldn't. That's it. My opinion, that's all it is. I see, I report. And what I see is Science Bob trying to make a legacy for himself in this field. When your goal isn't for the greater cause, you mean shit to me in this field. Sorry. Sorry, it's true. You mean cockadoo. And I like Science Bob. I do. I really do. Especially after he gave me props for being right about Lou Elizondo and the narrative. On a live show. I mean, how often does do we get credit for anything? It was the first time in a while. Appreciate that. I won't forget it. But I, I will not lie or not tell you what I think about what he did when he went to Bledsoe's. I'm going to say what I've been saying all along. Just because he gave me a compliment doesn't mean I'm going to change my opinion and say, he's a smart guy, he's got critical thinking. I still don't think he does. Even to this day. And he's probably, if he watches this or gets wind of it, he's going to be like, why does he do that? Why does he say that shit? Keep it to yourself, Rich. I'm sorry, Bob. I do. I like you. I do. I like him a lot. I really do. No disrespect. It's just I, I don't... Everything he's talked about and things that I've heard when we weren't all speaking, it's, it's the woo. You can't prove woo. Just can't. And if you're going to make claims that you're seeing aliens, Bigfoot, demons, whatever, please have evidence to back it up. Your stories are just stories. Or they're just going to get blown away in the wind like a hurricane in the Gulf. I hope you close your eyes. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing. <clears throat> all right so short class today but we still have some things to talk about and i'm willing to go further so let's do it here we go wow real ufo photos taken by the brazilian military during the operation saucer are you guys familiar with this? It's coming up. I haven't seen it. Oh, boy. No, oh, boy, Johnny. Let's take a look at this POS. You ready? I still see... My lights are flickering. So 
if for any reason the power goes out, that's it. I won't be coming back, but something's going on. It's flickered twice now. It was a good flicker, too. It was a real flicker. So real UAP photos taken by the Brazilian military during the Operation Saucer. And if that's the, 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 the picture, I hate it and I like it. Because you almost see what looks like a disc. And since I haven't researched this yet, I'm looking at it with fresh eyes for the first time. Uh, let me see if there's anything added to this. That's it. Oh, wait, there's more. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember these. All right. These are interesting. <clears throat> yeah, I uh, don't know if they're fake. I can't remember. Something about this one. This looks like the gimbal. Yeah, that's pretty creepy. I thought these were faked or manipulated. Some. Oh, I, I don't know. But this isn't the shape of the craft, as you can see here, right? Different. It's because the camera shakes. And it gives us a, you know, when it moves, it, it either elongates it or makes it a, you know, a different shape than what it really is. Yeah, I don't know. It's interesting, though. Kind of like that stuff. But uh, again, Reddit is not credible. So whatever. It was just there because I remember that. I remember seeing those. You know, this is interesting. So they're uh, they're talking to James Fox, right? Why did a UFO choose a school playground to land and communicate with the kids in Zimbabwe, 1994? I think it was just happenstance. There was no plan. It just happened. Just like what happened to uh, Travis. <laughs> there were roughly 100 kids in the playground, broad daylight, aerial school, Rue, Zimbabwe, 1994, and they got within arms, arms, some of them within arm's length of these beings. You've got all these children saying what they saw on camera after it happened. We go to the landing site, talk to people at the school. That case is absolutely, and it was witnessed by lots of other people in and around the area for several days before it chose a school to land. And imagine, hypothetically, if a UFO or several UFOs landed at a school in broad daylight in Rua, Zimbabwe, Africa, and interacted telepathically with nearly 100 school children, why? Not all of them had telepathic, but seen the incident. There you go. How significant of a story would you give that? They were roughly. Did you hear what he said? Sensationalizing it. A hundred kids did not communicate with the UFO. Ugh. It was a couple. What was it two a tree? That's all. Hundred. He tried to backpedal. Well, there were a hundred there, you know, seeing it. So, hey, I see somebody here. Francis Nolan became a member on Goofon. Thank you so much. That's amazing. Yeah, I keep forgetting about that. Thank you. You have now entered a realm from which you will never be the same again. Welcome to Goofon. And you know what? If you need anything, Cora will help you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> We're here for you. Anybody have any questions for me, you can always email me, goofonradio at gmail.com. That's goofonradio at, what is it? Gmail.com. That's right. And we like to give thanks to those who were members, are members of Goofon. It is that time of the show where we give a nice, reeky-charged hello 
I don't know how to do it, but uh, I think it goes like this. Oh, wait, no, that's Miyagi-Do shit. I'm sorry, I can't get the show out of my mind. I don't know what it is. But thanks, Francis. Francis Nolan, everybody. Welcome to the show. Welcome to Goof On. Welcome to What Are We? Say it! Oh! Truthology for ufology, yeah. All right, what else we got? Oh, yeah, here we go. Uh, yeah, we talked about it, right? The UFO a little bit. But I don't understand the, the, the logo. It's just bizarre. I know we talked about it already, but it is. It's bizarre. I, I, I don't know why they would make that patch or whatever the hell it is about the, uh, having a UFO on there. And I explained why. If, if you're really interested to know what I thought, because I think what I said rings true, just like they put the, the towers falling down on the one, the five, the 10, the 20. They put it right in front of us. I think that patch is telling us something that we are going to be attacked by aliens around the southern peninsula of Mexico in the Pacific Ocean, heading towards the East Coast. And you could look back and say, oh, yeah, that, where that UFO is on the patch, that's close to the cat, the Catalinas where they saw the Tic Tacs. Or you can just say eh, they're just being dicks. Place to celebrate it than CBS this morning. Mr. Secretary, I've got a genuine question. Wait, hold about on. The 75th anniversary to the United States Air Force and what better place to celebrate it than CBS this morning. Oh. Mr. Secretary, I've got a genuine question about UFOs, not as like little yes. green men and aliens, but <laughs> the idea that there could be some sort of technology out there. He said, I'm going to take there. a sip of Yeah, water. you got the secretary to laugh and <laughs> smile for a moment. Because <laughs> you said I want to talk about UFOs. <laughs> God, they are stupid. I hate all of them. I hate them all. There, so I think that's a, that's <laughs> well, a good question. You no, know, I mean, the UFO he question. said, what's wrong with little green men? <laughs> I mean, there's military video uh, of, of aviators who have seen. What's wrong with little green men? Because I haven't seen any little green women at guys all over ufology, huh? Things that cannot be explained, right? And there's an active investigation. I think the worry is not that it's little green men, but that it's a, 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 another country with technology that we've not seen before. So what, where, from where you sit, are UFOs a real issue? Um, to be quite honest, not for me. That was the Secretary of the Air Force, Frank no. Kendall, who says that UFOs or UAPs are not a real security issue. So whatever these are, at least these things are not a security. That's not what he said. That's not what he said. No, 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 no. Let's go back of aviators who have seen things that cannot be explained, right? And there's an active investigation. I think the worry is not that it's little green men, but that it's a, 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 another country with technology that we've not seen before. So what, where, from where you sit, are UFOs a real issue? Um, to be quite honest, not for me. Okay. Are UFOs a real issue? Threat. Got it. I missed it. That was the Secretary of the Air Force, Frank Kendall, who says that UFOs or UAPs are not a real security issue. So whatever these are, at least these things are not a security risk. Thank God. Former Navy pilot, Lieutenant Thank Ryan God. Graves, calls whatever is out there a security risk. He told us his F-18 squadron began seeing UAPs hovering over restricted airspace southeast of Virginia Beach in 2014 when they updated their jet's radar, making it possible to zero in. So, <clears throat> I keep forgetting to bring this up. Don't you find it interesting that the UFOs appeared when they got the new equipment? Let's see if the new equipment can record these objects clearly. And... Uh, Let's see if our pilots interact the way we hope they would. Sounds like they're testing shit out. What do I know? And with infrared targeting cameras. So you're seeing it both with the radar and with the infrared. Yes. And that tells you that there is 
something out there. Pretty hard to spoof that. These photographs. <laughs> We've already proven what these are. We're taking oh, something that makes sense. In 2019, in the same area, the Pentagon confirms these are images of objects it can't identify. Idiots. Lieutenant Graves told us pilots training off the Atlantic coast Idiots. see things like that all the, the time. time. Every day. Every day, every day for at least a couple of years. Every day. Uh, wait a minute. Every day for a couple of years? Mm -hmm. I wonder if there have been any near misses. Not only have there been near misses, there have been near hits, which are near misses. Not only that, we're firing at them. And they're flying around with what? What are they flying around with, everybody? Impunity. First question is, uh, there have been no collisions between any U.S. assets and one of these UAPs, correct? USS? Unidentified submerged... Submerged? We have not had a collision. We've had at least 11 near misses, though. 11 near misses? So... That's so stupid to me. We've had 11 near... Uh, yeah, we didn't have one or two. We didn't have 20 or 30. We've had 11. Yeah, I know it's a number, but... 11? Like, that's a little strange to pick 11. Well, it would have been stranger if he said 69, 13. That would have been weird. 11. I don't know why I find that so funny. It sounds funny to me. Near misses. First question is... Uh... I like the way it sounds. Coast see things like that all the time. Every day. Every day for at least a couple of years. Um, wait, wait a minute, every day for a couple of years? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wonder if there have been any near misses. First question is, uh, there have been no collisions between any U.S. assets and one of these UAPs, correct? We have not had a collision. We've had at least 11 near misses, though. 11 near misses? So these things are flying around our airspace and our restricted training airspace, <laughs> and Secretary Kendall is not worried about this? People don't know, by and large, the United States. That's all there is. With impunity, my friends. With impunity. So far, nobody's ever been killed by a UFO that we know of, officially. Uh, a threat? I think not. I think not. I, 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 don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't. I don't. So Lou Elizondo said, <clears throat> we must always be held accountable for our past sins to ensure we don't do it again, which is a bullshit comment. Some people never learn. They just get smarter on how to fool people. He says, it's too early to tell, but depending how this goes, there may be some folks having to answer some serious questions. I said, what about your current sins? Lying, fake remote viewer, psychic, threatening to beat people up, multiple personalities, sock accounts, stealing government property, three videos with Melon, and a host of other sins you've racked up there, Bubba Gump. Watch who's Lou, Lou. Yeah. And this guy says so long and thanks for all the fish. That's the name of the... He says, let's move past the gotcha, Lou. Most trust Lou Elizondo. Regardless of him saying he's a 32-inch waist, when in fact he's a 34, he's a 38. Or him saying he doesn't drink chocolate milk, when in fact you were able to obtain a copy of a dinner bill from 95 that said he ordered the chocolate milk. And then he says, I challenge Area 503 to instead spend your time telling us what he said that is true your work will become much easier. Oh my God. He's got Lou Elizondo derangement syndrome. That's true. Like people have Trump derangement. 
They have Lou Elizondo derangement. Moonlick, make a meme about Lou Elizondo. What did I just call it? Derangement syndrome. That should be out there now. I'm giving you permission. And then Fozzie Trooper says, spend your time telling us what he said that is true. So ignore the things that he says aren't true or don't add up. What's the logic in that? If there are doubts about his stories, then they should rightly be questioned. We know that part of disinformers is to give some truth. True. What a great conversation. Unbelievable. The, the ego on Lou. It's amazing to me. Oh, you have to be accountable for all your past sins. And what about the ones now there, rubberneck? Oh, boy. That's right, Johnny. Tweet from Lou Elizondo. Oh, I already had that one. Next. I'm not going to bother. I'm not bothering. I'm not bothering. Here we go. Orchestrated disclosure via Intel ops. Next stop, believer UFO activists in the press. But first, a manipulative money-making UFO stock rollout scheme for profit. Then it's onward to influence Intel defense policy in the political arena. That is exactly what's going on. Michael Huntington. Wow, dude, that's strong. He named it. He got it. He nailed it. That's exactly what's going on. It is orchestrated disclosure via Intel Ops, the three videos. Next stop. Believer UFO activists in the press. Marco Rubio, Bopity Bop. Who else? Uh, the Senator Gillibrand. Uh, the other one, the, 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 the guy that was on third phase, him. <laughs> so there, there's a lot of people. That's, that's true. UFO activists in the press. But first... A manipulative money-making UFO stock rollout scheme for profit. TTSA. Then it's onward to influence the Intel defense policy in the political arena. Very good. Michael Huntington coming out strong on that one. Damn. Damn. I like that. I do. I do. What if... Aliens are hyperdimensional beings. Pass. Pass. All right. This person says, first off, I don't believe they built the pyramids. I think humans were capable of doing it on their own. So I don't watch that ancient alien stuff. I never liked it, this person says. But anyways, I believe that aliens could very well be hyperdimensional. You don't believe that aliens didn't build, you'd be but you believe in hyperdimensional beings with no proof. Good job. I'm not even going to read the rest. Should I? All right. Meaning that they are by nature at much higher levels of consciousness than that of our own. So they have access to higher realms, higher dimensions. Ooh, it sounds so good. I know it sounds a bit too far-fetched, but I think about it. Wouldn't it be better for them to manipulate humanity through the shadows without us seeing it? It is said that they have already manipulated humans in the past. This is all theoretical, though. Just like the pyramids. <laughs> but back in ancient days, humans were far more aware of the unknown. I think it was done by them, tapping into their senses through the pineal gland. A lot of people would argue that this is all just nonsense. But maybe people back then, they had ways to see beyond our world. Our world? This is just a theory, though. Depends on what you think about the origin and nature of consciousness there. All right, not bad. Not bad. All right, <clears throat> what's going on? Sounds crunchy, something going wrong? Something wrong? All right, we're done. I want to thank the Super Chatters, all of you tonight. Uh, crazy. Thank you, though. Uh, it's almost as if you're saving a life. 
with your generosity. And someday I will make you prouder. Thank you very much for that. Um, moderators and super chatters doing a great job keeping the show on the up and up. I, I appreciate it. Yeah, the numbers were lower because we usually go on five hours earlier. But I think tonight's show was uh, one of the better ones this year. I enjoyed it. Thank you for hanging out. Newcomers and veterans, don't forget to subscribe. Anyway, I thank you for that. And we are truth. And the new people, Francis Nolan became a member tonight. Thank you for that. FAP, Death Proof Bum 01, and uh, everybody else, uh, Cash 45, uh, uh, bu 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 who's the other? No, J mm. no, not Don Mofo. Who, who else? No, there was a, several. I don't want to leave anybody out. It was one of those nights. Now, he's, I'm going to get in trouble. Hey, wait a second. People are going to hate me. Don't hate me. Please don't hate me. Here we go. All right. I got it up here now. Heather Birdie, Bernie Muro threw down a dollar just now. Thank you for that, too, Bernie. A few times FAP with the hundreds, Cash 45 with uh, $9, $100. 170, whatever it is. God almighty. Moonlick, Fernambulax. Oh, I didn't even see Fernambulax. How did that not make it through? Just a shout out to Bob. Yo, pimp. Thank you, Fernambulax. I'm sorry. I didn't see it. Ian Mc... Oh, no. Ian was yesterday. Oh, wait a minute. Fernambulax was yesterday. <laughs> Bernie Muro, Jeff Garvey. There it is. That's it. FAP, Heather Birdie, Cash 45. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. And uh, also on the PayPal, I appreciate uh, Death Proof Bum 01 as well. All right. I don't know why I felt like doing that. I usually don't go into all that. Oh. Oh, no. Okay. And we are. Oh. Truthology for ufology. You did that earlier. I know. Thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of your Sunday into Monday. I believe it is now 1.22 a.m. for me. We'll be back tomorrow right here, but maybe not Wednesday. Don't forget, storm's coming. Alien bless. A storm is coming.
identified flying objects. 